Hello, this session with the City of Boulder is utilizing ArcGIS Urban, Operations Dashboards, and Hub to model, assess, and communicate future land use change scenarios. Hi, I'm Jennifer Immick, a GIS Analyst 2 with the City of Boulder. And I'm Kalani Pahoa, Urban Designer with the City of Boulder. We are here to show the integration of the City of Boulder's use of ArcGIS Urban, Operations Dashboard, and Hub as part of a pilot project for the City's recently redeveloped subcommunity planning program. Our goal is to provide better information on land use planning and future land use to help inform staff, the community, and decision makers. Land use planning can impact things like the amount of urban developed areas and open space, jobs and housing creation, resiliency and environmental stewardship, transportation and access. The data can inform stakeholders, influence policy, and provide a better understanding for decision making. Our mission was to pilot the creation of the interactive models in ArcGIS Urban, analyze and augment the data using operations dashboards, and provide a robust integrated engagement platform to communicate and collect feedback by utilizing Hub. So a little bit of background on our journey with Urban up until now. In 2018, Jenny and I attended the Geo Design Summit and very quickly realized that the comprehensive planning group at the city could leverage this platform to model scenarios of future land use changes and area planning efforts. We were able to engage with the public in a robust way, save city resources, and provide a technological answer for some of the analog methods we're still employing. We decided to become an early adopter with Esri. And by 2019, we moved into a full license and we're utilizing Urban to test out the detailed aspects of the zoning plan module on future area plans. This year, with Urban's new land use module, we decided to pilot Urban with the project manager for the East Boulder subcommunity plan as a scenario modeling tool concurrent with the new subcommunity planning effort. This could inform staff and stakeholders on the effects of potential land use changes. Urban expanded our information base to include a developed set of capacity indicators and projections we hadn't had access to before. We're also investigating our integration of Urban with Operations Dashboard and Hub because it augmented the information and complemented our need to communicate very complicated information out to stakeholders. And our hope for 2021 is to fully implement this workflow into our other subcommunity and area planning efforts, in addition to improving our visual communication with City Engine and taking advantage of the other aspects that Urban offers for current planning. In order to utilize Urban for our purposes, we needed to configure the um, back end of the program with our land use and zoning code data. So we configured Urban with um, 25 land use districts, 44 zoning districts, 24 space use types, and about 75 common buildings. We needed to do this because our zoning code is fairly complicated and we were not able to use the out of the box settings available through Urban. When configuring the land use, um, you can see the list of land use categories listed there. And then within each one, there's more detail that's input into those, including various development standards lot coverage, maximum FAR, density calculations, and overall land efficiency numbers. In addition to the land use, we configured the space uses. Now the space uses are the, um, the one configuration area that has, it's tied to some of the indicator data. So as you go through each use, whether it's single family, residential, or commercial, you are then programming in things like energy use and carbon emissions based on either households or people, water usage, and by 
individual units, those numbers later become the calculator for looking at the overall impacts of, of some of the land use changes. We also configured building types and overall we had about 75 building types and it ranged from everything from a big box retailer like a Costco to a low rise apartment to office buildings, hotel, single family residential that's detached to attached single family residential, medium density types of units. And we also from there you program in the allowed space uses within those buildings. So it connects it to the space uses, which later connects to the capacity indicators. The city of Boulder does not have an existing land use GIS data set readily available. Thankfully, Urban is flexible enough for us to customize and configure our parcel data set to link our current jobs and population data which allowed for the delta of change between the scenarios and existing conditions. The configuration of the model quickly illustrated the need for a collaborative approach between the IT department, GIS, and planning to using ARC Urban. The Urban backend pulls data from the ARC GIS online environment, with an organization our size, we have an IT GIS administrator of the platform and many power users who can publish, edit, and create. Kalani and the other comprehensive planners are power users, but we wanted to maintain a structure of the data without multiple copies appearing in our organizational space online. So I, the GIS analyst, became the model and data owner with editing rights for the group. Within the urban model, we get an overview of the city from a bird's eye view. We can zoom in and see the plan area highlighted with the icon. The plan's profiled in the plan summary box, and this allows us to review the plan with a narrative and include any pertinent information like links to the city's website. As you move down, you see the summary profiles of the scenarios for this plan. In this case, we have four scenarios profiled, all with a summary of the total population, housing, and jobs. And there's an existing conditions, a trend model, a concept one, and a concept two. From there, we move into the plan editor. We can view each of the scenarios or concepts and the change in more detail. When looking at concept one, you can see the three areas of change within the subcommunity. One area is a catalyst project for TOD with the planned bus rapid transit. We're able to see the overall land use breakdown in acres across all the land uses in this plan area. We can see the space use breakdown. Within the space uses, like this affordable housing type, we can identify the amount of households or units by individual types. So here we see 656 units. With these land use changes and potential type development, we're able to calculate potential impacts to energy use, carbon emissions, trips, water use. All of this is part of our resiliency planning. We can then move into scenario two or concept two. This scenario includes allowing buildings to extend from 35 feet to 55 feet. We can then look at the land use breakdown across the toolbar here and the individual percentages. We can move into the space use and look at the individual percentages by space use. As we scroll down, we've pro proposed affordable housing types and we're able to calculate the total amount of affordable units proposed by type. So here you can see we have units proposed, 404 units. And from there, we can look at how the concept performs with the capacity indicator similar to concept one. And we can see the change from the existing in the population, households and jobs, along with all the other resiliency type indicators. ARC GIS Urban allows for a number of the metrics displayed in the platform, but it is somewhat limited. City Council had particular requests for viewing data outside of the urban platform, specifically in regards to resiliency, housing, and jobs. 
we decided to leverage Esri's operational dashboards to create additional views of the data, including carbon and CO2 measures, land use percentages by acreage, and jobs by space use types. In addition, we broke the connection to the urban backend tables and created our own transportation graphs with a TRIPS dashboard. We needed to customize our transportation dashboard to account for transportation demand management scales. Within urban, you can complete a single traffic generation model. We needed a series of models that were scaled to a variety of transportation demand management options, which reduce single occupancy vehicle use. So we modeled four scales of car trips, including the national average, a Boulder average, a transit oriented development within Boulder case study, and a citywide climate commitment goal. Each trip model decreased the level of single occupancy vehicle trips. The vehicle trips account for a significant portion of the city's carbon footprint. Seeing how the various land use changes affects reducing or increasing the trips, it helps us to make more resilient decisions to meet our climate commitment. In order to do the math for those reductions, we modified the not live version of the trips feature classes and completed the calculations in ARC Online. We learned a few lessons while creating the dashboards. While the majority of the data can remain linked to the urban scenarios through the live online feature tables, we did have to sever the connections to create the custom TRIPS dashboards. Dashboards are limited in the statistics they can show. As we continue the subcommunity planning effort, we will be exporting the feature tables for additional analysis in Excel and other programs. This is not an end-all be-all solution to our data needs. We are going to have to modify the data outside of Esri products. We're experimenting with the use of a hub page to present, display, and communicate the results of the urban scenarios and dashboard data to a variety of different stakeholders. The hub pages will not replace our current city website for subcommunity planning. Rather, it'll be a complement for the spatial data and visual integration of urban and other interactive platforms. In our hub landing page, we're beginning with an interactive overview map of the subcommunity boundaries in Boulder. We're able to put a brief summary narrative and include links to the other hub pages with the urban scenario modeling options and the community engagement. With the scenarios page in hub, we can profile the ArcGIS urban model. The model needs to be public for inclusion in a hub page. We're able to host the model using an iframe that leaks directly into our urban model. And we're able to interact with it by zooming in and out and looking at the plan summary features and the profile of the capacity indicators for each scenario. We then can take the various live and custom dashboards and embed them into a page in a side-by-side -side manner to compare the scenario or concept performance against each other. For this page, we profiled the live land use dashboard, the custom trips dashboard, and the snapshot summary of the energy consumption and carbon footprint. In the community engagement pages, we can gather feedback through a Survey123 questionnaire. With a Survey123, we can engage with interested parties by collecting spatial and non-spatial data in a robust manner. As it is all linked through Esri platforms, the GIS team can easily map responses and provide statistics and other coded feedback to the planners, which can in turn be spun up into dashboards. Once in-person community events can begin again, we have imagined using surveys linked to a live dashboard, displaying real-time engagement on a live streamed hub page, which would provide immediate feedback to both the public and planners as an event progresses. Both Jenny and I wanted to thank you for joining us today and taking the time to attend the Geo Design Summit. We thought we'd leave you with a few thoughts as far as our um, lessons learned. And the one that stands out for me right now is that the amount of sophisticated data that we're getting out of comprehensive land use changes in very large areas. Uh, so we're getting energy consumption and water use and housing units. All of these things before were very difficult or took a lot of projections for us to model. 
And we're hoping that with this better information for our decision makers, it helps us plan for resilience in the future. With COVID-19 and subsequent budget cuts, staff have taken on the task of providing these data sets to our community with limited outside consultant assistance. By using ArcGIS Urban, Operations Dashboards, and Hub, we can approach this goal more readily. And in closing, we wanted to note that we've been in a partnership with Esri and the Smart Cities team um, with Christine Ma and Jason Carey and to help launch our urban platform. And their knowledge and support throughout this process has been invaluable.